In the lead up to the New South Wales state election, the National Trust of New South Wales is calling for change regarding heritage legislation being able to be switched off by government. Well, joining me live is David Burden, Conservation Director at the National Trust of Australia. David, thank you very much for joining us. So what exactly is the change that you're calling for? Hi, Janie. Yeah, well, I think the issue here is that there's some considerable overlap between the Environmental Planning and Assessment Act uh, and the Heritage Act in New South Wales. And the EP&A Act actually outlines when other legislation doesn't apply, and that's effectively when it's turned off. And one of those situations is when the Heritage Act isn't applying for state significant development and state significant infrastructure projects. So that means that heritage probably isn't being given the full consideration that it needs for some of the most significant projects, um, often affecting state heritage register listed places. And does this also mean the National Parks Act as well? The National Parks Act is another one of those acts that can be turned off uh, under the EPNA Act. And, uh, and of course, that leaves vulnerable a lot of our Aboriginal cultural heritage sites and their places that are obviously of great significance to uh, the, the Indigenous peoples of this country and the rest of the population. So can you give us some examples? I know in Parramatta, for example, Hambleton Cottage. Talk us through what's happening in that area. Yeah, well, Hambleton Cottage is a great example. I mean, Parramatta is such an important place. I mean, there's only uh, 20 places on the World Heritage List in Australia, and, and Parramatta's got one of those at, at Old Government House. And Hambleton Cottage is associated with one of the oldest or the oldest house in Australia, which is Elizabeth Farm. That's from 1793. And Hambleton Cottage is from about 1821 to 25. And immediately behind it, there's a proposal uh, to build a, a block of, uh, of town, of home units uh, and it's just going to be something that's going to detrimentally impact Hambleton Cottage, Experiment Farm and Elizabeth Farm, three of the most important heritage sites in Australia. I think it's important to state that there's not uh, a, a call for no new housing in Parramatta, certainly not, but it's just where we put that is something that's going to be very important. So correct me if I'm wrong, so you're not asking to not build more infrastructure, but what you're calling for is to have more of a conversation with the governments to work out the best area for this new infrastructure to be built so it doesn't affect the heritage regions that we're seeing. Yeah, I think that's that's the key point. I mean, there's there's certainly no objection to building new things and building new infrastructure. It's about having heritage be part of the conversation sooner. I think that's one of the issues with turning off the Heritage Act is that it means that these heritage conversations come right at the end of a project when uh, all of the design, the development, the costings, the engineering, the studies, the assessments, they've all been completed at that stage. And then they ask the question about whether it's going to have a heritage impact. If we ask those questions right at the beginning of the projects, then we can actually come to a much better solution, which will actually help protect the items that we're looking for and make our new infrastructure more appropriate. And you have an architecture background, so you know where things can be built in, in terms of the best light and so forth. Talk us through another example, perhaps Central Station uh, Heritage Council in Sydney. Yeah, so I think... Um, that's that's exactly right. Central Station is obviously a very important place to the people of Sydney. It's on the State Heritage Register. But what's being proposed at Central Station is to build over all of the um, all of the platforms uh, at Central Station and build a series of high-rise towers. Now, a number of these towers are just near the Henry Dean Plaza. They're actually being built on top of or overhanging existing heritage buildings within the State Heritage Register boundary. And like you said, if there was actually this consideration before rather than after that fact, then we'd realise that we're building these high-rise towers on the northern side of a, a pedestrian plaza, which will make it in completely engulfed in shade, when simply we could build it outside of the State Heritage Register boundary on the southern side and have benefits in both, both aspects. And what are the economical ramifications of what's happening there as well? Yeah, well, I think that that's, that's one of the issues is that we're... we're um, you know, keen to build this tech central. The government's pushing that agenda. Uh, and I think that there, there need, needn't be um, these huge economic ramifications. We can still have housing. We can still have new development. We can still connect Surrey Hills and Ultimo, which are the two um, parts of the city divided by Central Station's tracks. But we can also protect our heritage at the same time. So it's not an either or. It's a, it's a you know, a plus plus is what we're looking for.
A big focus for the election, David, is the Warragamba Dam wall and whether to raise it or not. In your opinion, what are we looking at here in terms of uh, world heritage and uh, national parks and so forth? Yeah, look, I think Warragamba Dam is obviously a very big and complex issue. Uh, in September 2021, the, the then planning minister, Rob Stokes, he refused to declare it a, a critical state project because that would give it that immunity from, from legal and regulatory challenges. But uh, of course, Warragamba Dam is in a UNESCO World Heritage listed national park. Uh, and it's you know an incredibly important site for the Gundungara people. So I think that if we can actually make those proper uh, environmental assessments first rather than last, uh, that's when we're going to actually come to a, a more um, you know sensible outcome for um, Warragamba. And it has to be said that the first point there is not to build more houses on what we know is a floodplain. And history obviously tells us that. What about the Roxy Theatre? The Roxy Theatre is a, a really amazing building. It's in Parramatta. Uh, Parramatta's, uh, you know, cultural uh, facilities are, are far less than Sydney's, unfortunately. And here we have a 1930s, uh, uh, you know, Spanish mission style um, cinema complex and theatre that could be easily restored. And the government's actually building a new metro stop right next to it. So that means that the Roxy Theatre would then effectively be a 20 minute ride from the Sydney CBD. So it wouldn't just be something that the people of Sydney, could, uh, Parramatta could use, it could be people from Sydney as well. So that's a really great example of where we could adaptively reuse and restore a heritage building um, in combination with a, a great new infrastructure project. And I think that's the thing we need to call for. And I believe you had a forum last week. What was the outcome? Yeah, look, the National Trust did have a forum. I think um, what, what we had a couple of outcomes there. The main outcomes were that we're, we're identifying that we need to just protect our heritage. That's done through legislation and actually turning it on. We need to fund our heritage. I think it's important to remember that 90% of our heritage items are locally listed rather than state listed, and they get very little funding. And it's also important to remember that the, the government that will be elected will be responsible for 50% of the items on our state heritage register. So probably funding those is really important. And the third thing is actually to incentivize heritage. And that's where that Roxy Theatre comes in. Uh, if we can sustainability, sustainably reuse uh, our existing heritage buildings and incentivize that use, that's when we'll get good proposals being put forward by the development community. All right, well, we look forward to hearing more and thank you so much for joining us today. David Burden, Conservation Director at the National Trust of Australia. Thank you very much.